part of the reason I'm here today as a provocateur, an agent of change, and uh, uh, someone who is who believes in truth and justice. I got involved in this criminal justice stuff because, you know, we have to talk about the truth, right? And this country was founded on racism. This country was founded on sexism. And to think that because there's one black man in public housing in Washington, D.C., to think everything has changed, I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. You know what I'm saying? And what I, what I really want to talk about here today is that, you know, people of color in this country, in particular blacks, the indigenous, Latinos, Tejanos, Chicanos, Mexicanos, Mexicans, Mexicans, lo que sea, Hispanics, whatever you want to call this, we've been fighting for our freedom since day one. And what's happening inside these prison walls today is the new slavery. This is the new slavery. Let me tell you, because in 1964, the Civil Rights Act was supposed to outlaw discrimination. And what happened? Well, they kind of just figured out how they can manipulate the laws. See, because not, since 1970 to today, the prison population has exploded by some 700%. Okay? And the majority of the prisons are filled with blacks and Latinos. Why is this? Because we're inherently more criminal? I don't think so. Why is it? I'll tell you why. It's because the war on drugs. It's because zero tolerance get tough on crime laws. It's because of social and economic isolation. It's because of the private prison, the private prison industry, as we mentioned. And I'm not up here to tell you that everybody in prison is innocent because that's not true. But well, what I will tell you is that not everybody in prison is guilty either. Okay? There's so much to talk about. Man, there's so many good things that we've already heard on the panel, but I want to tell you that, again, None of what I'm telling you is biased, okay? I'm here to tell you from the Bureau of Justice. The statistics will tell you that. What is it? Some one in three men will be in prison at some point in his life? And what is it? Some one in six Hispanic or Latino will be in prison at some point in his life? That's scary. You know, we talk about young boys growing up. When I was coming up, I was always taught, hey, something's going on, don't look at the police. Just get, get out of there. Why? Because what's going to happen? They'll throw you in prison. And they won't leave you there. Throw away the key. And that's probably what we've done to the majority of our children today. Listen. What's going inside these prison walls right now is, is completely bogus. You can walk into any prison right now and see a rapist or a murderer sitting next to a guy who has an addiction problem. See a rapist or a murderer next to a guy who's in there for a second DUI. What's up with that? And they're cellies. They're bumped up. Why is it that I got a good friend of mine and probably a good, many like you know, uh, a guy who's doing an eight year bid for an $80 bag of crack? Sure, we're well aware of the crack versus cocaine disparity epidemic. Again, issues, the school of prison, the pipeline is strong. Let's talk about the truth. Let's talk about what's really going on there besides things you might not see in the media. And I brought, I brought some, some resources here. Uh, well, let's talk about this. Well, who's this judge that we got over in, in, in Pennsylvania taking a million dollars to lock up children? We know about this juvenile. Now, this guy's got a million dollars. He's willing to risk his, feet, his freedom for a million dollars. Imagine how much money that the system is gonna make from this. And where's that money coming from? Oh, you guessed it, our tax dollars. Let's talk about some stuff you might not see in the media. How about in, we talked about Beaumont. For those that might know about bloody Beaumont over in Texas, I'll give you an example, something you won't see in the media. How about when a, a, a black inmate assaults a white corrections officer? He's probably been bullied, he's probably been picked on, he's probably been nagged at, he's probably dying from lack of stimulation inside of this prison that's 120 degrees, so he assaults this white racist officer. What happens? The white guards sneak in some butcher knives to the Aryan Nation boys, and they have a, a bloodbath in the cafeteria the next day. And what you'll find in the media, what you'll see in the media is they'll say, today there was a disturbance and some inmates were injured. Right? You see, you see a footnote. And I can continue on and on, but I just want to talk about, in Texas, we talk about third world countries, of us having torture happening in third world countries. Well, the United Nations Committee Against Torture has pegged Texas some of the worst prisons in the world. And again, talk about the new slavery. Why was the Angola State Prison in Louisiana a former slave plantation? You know, first and foremost, the war on drugs, how it's just crippled our communities. I mean, again, Let's put this into perspective. When we talk about the law, this, this construction of what we feel is, is right and just, it should not be the law. The law is, is so bogus in some respects, and I'll give you an example, is that, and again, nothing to anybody who drinks alcohol, but I used to live in the Beer City, USA. Oh yeah, beer, all right, let's have some beer, let's have some fun. 
But shame on you and go to prison for smoking a plant. Let me tell you something. Beer, liquor is far more dangerous than somebody that's puffing on a little dope, a little weed. And yeah, I say weed. Hard, pardon the, 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 the slang. Next, I want to talk about police brutality. Mr. Mike Lobot brought up police brutality. And let's not forget one of the highest profile stars, someone who's heralded in this country, was the biggest victim of police brutality. And that's Dr. Martin Luther King. We are here celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for Dream Week. And this man, let's talk about the truth, a matter of public record. This man was assassinated by agents of this government. Let's talk about police brutality. Let's talk about the truth, okay? The next thing I want to talk about is that, yes, I've been arrested on some racist bullshit. No, I haven't been in prison, but I've been locked up in a jail cell. No, it's not fun. The, 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 the case was immediately thrown out of court. The ALCU said they couldn't do anything. So now I have to talk about this racist bullshit every time I go for a government job. Imagine having a felony, right? The next thing I want to talk about is that, you know, some of us are talking about what we're doing inside the criminal justice system and some of our work. A few years ago when I was living in Michigan, um, there was a, a, a deputy warden, a black man, who was down for the cause. He says, Maximum, man, you got some influence. You got some charisma. You know, why don't you come in here and help out some of these Latinos? And I was like, really? You know, what's going on? He's like, man, these guys in here stabbing each other over a $40 piece of plastic. What are you talking about, man? He's like, man, we need you to come in here and take a look. I went inside this prison and I was shocked. Couldn't tell the difference between this prison and a mental institution. Where everybody who's sick, injured, ill, or whatever is getting an aspirin. Right? Talk about addiction. Talk about drugs. A ibuprofen. Go ahead, give me an ibuprofen for a broken leg, whatever you got. Right? And I, and I went into these prisons. I've got a couple of pictures here because I wanted to share with you. As I walked in here, I was shocked because I felt like I was in a family reunion. Everybody in there looked just like me. Felt like I was in a high school reunion, 10-year high school reunion, because everybody I grew up with was locked up, right? Sure, many of you know the same story. So as I start hearing some of these stories and start seeing these horrific conditions, I said, you know what? I can write about it. So recently I wrote a play called The Oppression of the Oppressed. Some of you were at the reading that we had, and uh, it's a phenomenal story where I talk about true stories of, again, men who are innocent. One of my good friends, Hakeem Crampton, was put into prison for 15 years, facing maybe a lifetime bid when his, his, he was forced to confess over something that never even happened, right? That's what happens, right, when he's telling my crime. Someone's going to pay. If you can't find who did the crime, go get him in a room and you're going to interrogate him. These are things that we don't often hear about, okay? Things that we don't, don't get as much attention. Um, the other thing is that what I want to do with this play is that today with police brutality, we got these weapons with us, these camera phones. We're able to catch, catch gross atrocities of, of the law. Things that we already know happens inside of our communities, but we're able to actually document them, right? We see all these guys, these police officers, shooting black men when they say, oh, this guy went for my taser. Man, no, he didn't. We got proof. He didn't reach for nothing, homie. But we don't see what happens inside the prisons. And I know what happens inside the prisons, so I wrote about it. And I've got an amazing play ready for production. And I'm looking to get it off the ground this year. And I'd encourage you all, if you know of anyone who wants to see this get off the ground, get in touch with me, okay? There's so much work to do. And I don't think things are going to change. We talk about these legislations. Look, the system is comfortable with locking up all these people. They're making money off it. A part of me thinks that there's some sick pleasure that this country gets off putting men in the shoe, right? Special housing unit. Make them, make them go insane, right? You go, you go into solitary confinement, you're either going to leave a schizophrenic or a scholar. I hope you brought a couple books with you. I'm telling you folks, there's some gross, gross atrocities happening inside these prisons, and uh, we got to make some change with it. So